and welcome to the latest episode of the Online Warriors podcast. Coming into the month of September, we are back. As Nerd Bomber put it just a moment ago, we are coming back into people's ear holes, reminding you that we're still here. Our apologies or your welcome. Yeah, right. Whichever you prefer. I'm Illegal86. As always, I am here with Nerd Bomber and Tactic. But this is also a very special episode in a number of ways. We're not just back from our hiatus. We're big back. We're big back. We have a fourth with us today. Of course, it's it's our fantastic Patreon producer, Mr. Stephen Keller. Stephen, welcome. Welcome back to the show. You're getting getting back into it here with all of us, and we're all just feeling real fresh right now. How, how have you been? I've missed you guys. I mean, I've had to fill the void with other podcasts, and I took you guys away and then filled it with like six more, so... It's all right. We were, we were in a bit of an open relationship at that time. It's okay. <laughs> right. And, 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 and to be clear, what you mean is other inferior podcasts, I'm sure. No need to, n- to name names, but uh, oh, that's, yeah. uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure what the case was. Totally not as good quality. It's a very special episode uh, as well. It's our 207th episode. Is it okay for me to... Do we know for sure that that's the number now, or is that still an estimate? I think it's an estimate. It's a close estimate. We've, we've been approaching or apparently surpassing 200 episodes for a while now. I think we probably, at one time or another, wanted to make specific and special mention of it because it's obviously a milestone for us and for the listeners, but we don't know. So th- this is the 207th or the 206th, or maybe the 200th. This might be it. We really don't know. But either way, we're over 200, and uh, it-, it feels appropriate as a result of that to kind of take a beat and um, thank the people who have gotten us here. Stephen, of course, being chief among them and being here with us, but all the listeners at large and all of our Patreon supporters and everyone who's continued believing in the show and also the people who are back now after a month of us being gone, getting married and doing life stuff and, and right away are coming back and, and listening. We appreciate y'all. And as a special gift slash reward, we are rolling out the red carpet today with a fantastic episode jam-packed with topics. We're going to be talking about uh, an upcoming project kind of near and dear to my heart for a number of reasons, which is the Weird Al biopic. I don't know if we've talked about it before on the show, but we're going we're to dive into that because I got a big trailer. I think it's coming no- uh, early November on, on the Roku channel, which is interesting. We'll, we'll get into all of that. Uh, we're going to be talking about Halo Infinite Forge mode, uh, which is coming out, but they just, what I'll say is, is unfortunately axed a certain feature. Also coming out in november incidentally and then we're going to be talking about assassin's creed mirage which was leaked earlier this week or as nerd bomber puts it ass creed can we can we make that happen can we uh, hashtag i I don't want to like i see i was gonna say i don't know if i want to make that hashtag because we don't want to we don't want to send our listeners to what i can only presume is is a dark and unfortunate section of twitter but i guess that's for them to decide for, for themselves i do want to lead off with the weird al biopic So if you haven't watched the trailer for this, uh, and the title of the movie is Weird, the Al Yankovic story. And as I mentioned, streaming for free November 4th on the Roku channel. We got, I think, a couple sneak peeks. And, and, you know, when Daniel Radcliffe was attached to the project to play Al Yankovic, it made news. But this trailer, it's going on three minutes or so, and it's jam-packed. Now, an important thing to note about this, you you might watch this trailer and think, this is is ridiculous. I I, I don't know. The first time I watched... You would you would be right, but like this is an interesting trailer because I can certainly see a lot of people who don't know a whole lot about Weird Al's career or any of that, like watching this and taking it very very seriously and thinking this is actually what happened, you know. And, and certain parts of it certainly are more far fetched than others. You know, the the whole Madonna thing is very very bizarre. But I, for those that don't know, I don't know if I've mentioned it on the show before, but like. I grew up with Weird Al. I had an older brother who was very, very into the whole Weird Al thing. And like during the 90s in particular, he was spitting out a lot of albums, like late 80s, early early 90s, I think in particular, it was like a really hot time for him. All, all of them being, of course, you know, parodies and the polka style that he's known for. And so I'm very, very excited to watch this movie. And the other reason being Daniel Radcliffe, who I have definitely gushed about on the podcast before. I think he is like a total success story for escaping what seems like the Bermuda triangle of child stardom, because it's, as we've seen in various cases, like it's a very hard thing to, to break out of when you are Harry Potter for, you know, whatever, 10 years. And he's doing very, very interesting projects these days. And he has been since he stopped doing Harry Potter. And I think he's kind of doing it the the right way. Like he made his like bajillion dollars being 
the tentpole of an entire franchise that so many people bought into. And afterward, it's just like, oh, you know, I'm set for life. Let me do like fun, creative things. I'm going to do what I, I want. Can. Yeah. It, 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 and it's like, it's so refreshing. And like, honestly, to a lesser extent, I would say Elijah Wood has done something similar after getting out of Lord of the Rings. He's been like, okay, now, you know, I, I kind of already got my meal ticket. Now I can do, you know, weird things like Wilfred and like very, like they yeah, uh, did this movie called Pat Trust with Nick too. Cage. So he's a- Yeah. And then it's not like they're not, it's not like they're not good things, but they're very offbeat things that I think a lot of people would be afraid of. But, you know, I think these guys realize they don't have to be afraid. And like this weird L project is like, it's very weird, but it also like, I, I should also make a note of like, this has like Rain Wilson, Evan Rachel Wood. Do we know Weird Al's involvement in the making of this picture? He's in the movie. He's in the trailer, actually. But Did does he produce? No, I didn't see him. Well, where was he? Does he? Is he like a producer? Yeah. So right, the, like the trailer starts, and like right away, Dan Radcliffe opens the door, throws a tape at a guy, and says, "Play it." The guy he throws the tape to, who presumably is playing some music executive or something, that's Weird Al. Yeah. So so. so Weird Al, as far as I know, has been very supportive. I don't know. Okay, so he he did uh, write it. I'm reading now. He did actually write it along with the guy who's directing it, Eric Appel, uh, who's worked on Silicon Valley. So he's like very supportive of the project, and I'm sure had a hand in you know the tack this is taking, which is very much Weird Al is a parody artist, right? So it only makes sense for a Weird Al biopic to parody other music biopics which it's adding an interesting layer to this. I'm I'm definitely wondering about the balance of that because even me being a huge fan of Weird Al, I would like to watch the movie and and be able to take some factual stuff away from it or see how he did it. I feel like you probably won't get anything super factual out of this though because I mean he was yeah. a very he still is obviously like a very clean person. Like he doesn't like you never really He doesn't drink at all. He doesn't drink. That's another thing that no drug. He doesn't yeah. really like swear that like I'm trying to think of in his songs does he swear? No. I don't think he does. And it, this entire biopic is basically like it seemed like him and Madonna running around being like the worst type of celebrities you could potentially be and him just being like a Hollywood train wreck, which obviously is not the case. Right. It's it's a delicate balance. Like I, I'm willing to let go of a more traditional biopic route because this route seems really fun, but I would kind of like, you know, a, a traditional biopic that describes, you know, because he, he, you know, as a result of being a parody artist, you bump elbows with so many famous people. Like he, I'm sure he has bumped elbows with Madonna. He has to ask these people to like, yeah, Madonna, you know, Michael Jackson, uh, who else? And and actually, uh, Mike, Michael Jackson, like very vocally, has been a huge supporter of Weird Al, like since Weird Al, and like that's why there's a lot of Michael Jackson parodies. Uh, that Weird Al does because Michael Jackson was basically like, do whatever you want with my music. Some people, I think Kurt Cobain being another one, like they treat it as a rite of passage. And I think they should of like, I've become famous enough where Weird Al is parodying my stuff. E- even if the parodies are in certain ways mean spirited or, or trying to poke fun they're it's a sign that you made it. I, I think it's, it's very interesting. So Stephen, any, any Weird Al experience or fandom on your end, any Daniel Radcliffe experience or fandom on your end, where, where are you at with this one? Oh, uh, when it comes to Weird Al, the only experience I have is I didn't really ever listen to him, but I did go see him in concert at like the local fair. For some reason, I decided to drag my parents to it back in the it was like the Amish Paradise phase. Yeah, so, a great phase. I mean, I've seen him in concert, but other than that, I haven't really ever listened to so him. So in concert, does he like dress him. up like per each song? So like, did he have a fat yeah. suit? Did he have an Amish suit? Yeah, he does the fat suit and does all the kind of weird dressing up i remember there's a jurassic park song i think there was dinosaurs yeah. on stage and and that's yeah, what got you into jurassic it. park showmanship yeah, is key totally. and that is amazing he well he, I, i'm very jealous because I, I as much as i've listened to all this stuff like i've never been to one of his shows and i hear they are and i also hear like he has so many eras of of music that he that he parodies and, and obviously they're they're readily identifiable he'll like again he'll do like madonna and michael jackson and then he'll be doing like you know, white and nerdy, which is like, you know, whatever mid to late 2000s. So when he's covering all of this stuff in one show, it's it's very impressive. You know, he's jumping around between all these styles. Like you said, he's he's bringing a lot of showmanship to it with the costuming and everything. And they show a little bit a little bit of it in this trailer again, albeit maybe in a farcical way. But we do know you've mentioned on the show before and we know from from our conversation with you that you're you're, you're a big movie guy. So as far as the stuff I, you know, we've talked about with Daniel Radcliffe, do you think this is a reasonable direction for him? Do you, do you like him? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. That's a pretty broad question, but 
What are your, what are your feelings on on Dan the Man? Well, so at first, when I watched the trailer, I was like, oh, this is a typical biopic. They're doing the drugs. They're doing the sex. They're doing his rise. They're doing his fall. But then I actually read the wiki and I saw that, yeah, it's a parody of it. So it's intentional. It's supposed to be that way. And then I like yeah. how Weird Al has kind of embraced Daniel Radcliffe in this role. Because I think the accordion he uses was one that Weird Al actually uses and he gifted it to him. So he's yeah. Like, so he, he's fine with it. And I mean, I've liked what Daniel Radcliffe did in like Swiss Army Man and what he did in what was it, The Lost City. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen Harry Potter, but I like what he's done. That's not Harry Potter. See, that that's a fascinating perspective to me because most people and like you still certainly recognize him for Harry Potter because you're obviously aware of Harry Potter. But to not have seen it, but to have seen his other stuff, that's got to be a very interesting I guess, approach to watching Daniel Radcliffe, because I, I wouldn't say that I watch like The Lost City and, and by the way, Swiss Army Man, the, the movie you mentioned. It's an amazing movie. If, if no one has seen it, like like Tech Technic Bomber, have you guys seen Swiss Army Man? We because haven't that seen is that a one, no. Movie. So is that's that the, the movie one where he's from... the corpse? He's dead, yeah. Okay. And it's by um, Daniels. And it's these two guys named Daniel who most recently came out with a movie called Everything Everywhere All at Once which like got a bunch of awards and like was very offbeat and weird. And Swiss Army Man definitely has a lot of that same weirdness and uh, artistic quality that I really responded to when I watched it. And Daniel Radcliffe, albeit, you know, playing a corpse from much of the movie is like fantastic in that movie. But I just, I guess I can't imagine, not that you see Harry Potter in any of those performances, but it has to be very interesting watching that stuff and like movies like what if, and like the woman in black, like he's done a lot of stuff since Harry Potter and watching it without that context, you probably just see him as any other young actor. Yeah. Yeah. He's That's just pretty a cool. Guy. <laughs> yeah. He's just a regular guy. Cause you know, I see him as, as we were just talking about, I see him as someone who's like making a lot of offbeat choices for very specific reasons. And, and one of the reasons being, Hey, I did Harry Potter. So I'm trying to distance myself from that you know, family friendliness and also just like take very weird roles. But it, it it might be that just those are the things that he gravitates to naturally. Well, he so, also, if I remember right too, there is a show, it's either on TBS or TNT, but it's basically like yeah. every season is kind Steve of like Buscemi. a capsule comedy. Like every season is a different like setting yeah. and theme. And I heard that was also really good. But again, it's another one of those like kind of offbeat, quirky type things. And unfortunately, I, I can't think of the name of it, but I, I know what show you're talking about because it's him and Steve Buscemi at least, in at least one of the seasons. And I remember thinking, what a bizarre... I mean, Steve Buscemi is a bizarre pair with anybody, but just they're, they're, they're both like very interesting people to have kind of running a show. There was also a movie called Guns Akimbo where he has guns nailed to his hands. That was another one that recently came out that he was just like, I'm going to do that. And like, that I just, was I actually that, like, it's, it's it wasn't great, right? right, but it was like a fun movie and it was very like oh, you guys, you guys watched visually it. stunning. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, you know, it, it, I think when you look at his post Harry Potter filmography, like a Weird Al biopic, I, I think it does make sense. If anything, it's it's more normal than like a lot of the movie, and like that's a label that I, maybe I shouldn't ascribe to like any movie or like I shouldn't just refer to his filmography as as weird, but like it's a little offbeat. So if anything, this is even less offbeat, but it's still. It and is I, weird because and that's I think it the speaks the movie. to him as an actor too. Because there, I think there's other actors that try to do these offbeat movies, and it, it just doesn't fit. It doesn't get the buzz that it would otherwise. So we were just talking about before the show started, Bullet Train, for example. That's a weird movie, and yeah. I just I don't really care about Brad Pitt in that role, honestly. <laughs> right. I think what that is, or what it might boil down to, is like. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but especially these days, I feel like when Brad Pitt's in a movie, you pretty much know what you're going to get. And I, there are, I'm, I'm sure, some exceptions to that rule, but I think you know what you're going to get. With Daniel Radcliffe, it's, I think, a little bit less clear sometimes. And and maybe it's that he has more range or maybe that he's capable of, of capable and willing to take like bigger chances when he does things. But I think I think this this biopic is a is a big swing. So I'm 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 excited to see it. I'm excited especially because again, Weird Al himself has kind of put his stamp on it and endorsed it and, and been in it and written it. So again, this is uh set to release on the Roku channel on November fourth. So be on the lookout for that. I don't know, like one of the things about this I'm gonna have to figure out is like how to use the Roku channel. <laughs> like because I have two Roku TVs in my house. It's fairly easy. If I don't you, like I don't use them. So you know how you can see all of the kind of boxes in your grid? If yeah, you, I can go to down, my I can go channel. to my Fire Stick. 
well, right. But I assume I'm going to like click on it. It's going to be like, make an account, do all this and that. And I'm going to be like, I don't want to. I just want to watch the Daniel Radcliffe Weird Al movie. There's a lot of good. Well, I I want to say a lot, but there's not. There are a few good things on the Roku channel, one of which is Murder House Lip. So you need to make an account just to watch that anyway. I don't even know know if you need to make an account. So we did watch Murder House Flip. You did? Which, yes. Steven's probably sitting over there like, what are you guys? What is happening? What are you talking about? I don't know what this show is. Murder House Flip is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, people buy houses where someone was murdered. Or like there's some... Is that, that's what they all it is. And they're like, we're going to flip it and make it nice. And like, it's weird because the episodes are like eight minutes long, <laughs> if I remember correctly. But yeah, my wife is into like paranormal stuff and like that kind of thing, like true crime and stuff. So we watched some of that. And I, I think you're right. I, th- I don't think we needed to sign in anything because I think when you buy a Roku TV, because these we have like Roku TVs, like we didn't buy this streaming stick or the box or anything. And when you do that, I think when just to like set the TV up and like use it, period, you need to like make an account. So we probably already have accounts. November 4th, Weird, the Al Yankovic story starring Daniel Radcliffe, Evan Rachel Wood, and many others. Be on the lookout for that. Let's shift gears and let's talk a little bit about Halo Infinite and in particular Halo Infinite Forge mode. And and to start, I'm going to swing it over to you, Steven. I've been outside of the Halo ecosystem for a while, but I'm, you know, I I don't want to make assumptions like I I go into this assuming that every gamer has to some extent been a part of that ecosystem and, and played the Halos. But like, what is your Halo experience? What's your level of Halo experience like? What's your level of investment in that franchise at this time? So just like Harry Potter and Pokemon and all that stuff we've talked about before in the show, I have no experience with Halo. I did play, I think, Halo 3 or 4 with a roommate. We beat it in one night, but that was it. So that kind of leads into this topic with the whole co-op thing, because that's how we played it. But other than that, I've never, I haven't really experienced any of the other games. Yeah, well, so so first of all, and like, I don't want to speak for the entirety of the podcast team, but like... I, in my opinion, you're not missing much. And like, for, and now the fans are going to be coming at me on Twitter at OWLE86. But like, I have I exclusively I, played couch co-op. Yeah. Well, yeah. So we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to get into the couch co-op thing, but like a, as a whole, you know, obviously the franchise is still going on. I have not played, I think I've only played a couple, like, I think I might only played the first one all the way through, first of all, like the campaign. And I like, we had like Halo parties when I was in high school where like we would play one and two multiplayer, but that's just, you know, at that time, especially it was a very standard split screen multiplayer game. We would like set up local area connections and do it. And it was a lot of fun, but it was like, it was the thing back then, but there wasn't anything particularly notable about it. That's what I would say. and. I don't know, you know, as as online gaming became much more prevalent than that, they've made a lot of changes and a lot of games have come out since, you know, we had Halo 3 and 4, ODST, Reach, you know, and now now Infinite. And I think there, there's Master Chief Collection in there somewhere and all these all these games. And one of the things I think that came out in 3 was Forge Mode, which is basically you make your own maps. It allows essentially multiplayer becomes a lot more customizable and i guess infinite forge mode which is launching on november 8th is also including the release full release of online campaign co-op now the sad thing here and like a a constant refrain on this show generally is we all love couch co-op like that's and that's i I think we're pretty unified in that and couch split screen co-op was originally going to be a part of this forge mode and it was it has since been ripped away and i, I want to read well, it was not just part of forge mode it was like part of the game yeah. and it has been axed from the game completely and i, I want to read what they said about it because i i i think this statement is bullcrap we just start by i don't want to color the statement before i read it but it look it's bullcrap yeah 343 industries said and i'm quoting now in order to improve and accelerate ongoing live service development and to better address player feedback and quality of life updates we have real reallocated studio resources and are no longer working on local campaign split screen co-op my first question with that is what resources do you need at this point if it's if it's if what you're saying is true and it's already in the game what the heck that's my basic question and, and and I don't know, maybe one of you can answer it for me. Well, I don't know. It hasn't been released yet. So that was one of the things. They released Halo Infinite with the promise that the couch co-op would be coming. And I think they've been working on it this whole time. So like I'm sure the bones of it are in there, but I think maybe they can't optimize it well enough because I know when you get into it, part of the reason why couch co-op is going away at least is because it basically is running two instances of the game and then it requires more graphics and processing power to run. And that's why they don't like doing it anymore these days just because it's work to 
I mean, I think you get lower graphics. It doesn't look as good because you have to like reduce the resolution so that you can run the two instances, blah, 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 blah. Basically, though, it's a lot of work, so they don't want to do it. Let me try to counter argue that. I mean, I can't counter argue it because I think I imagine what you said is correct as far as why they did it. But I would also postulate that the the gamers who are concerned with and who want to play couch screen, couch split screen co-op are the kind of players who the reason they like couch co-op split screen, all that stuff is because they grew up with it or right. have it some sort of formative experience associated with it. It has nothing to do with the triangles. That's exactly the point I'm making. Like you could, you could give me halo infinite co-op that has doom graphics. And I would be like, here's the great. thing. Co -op. I'm going to be honest with you. Those people that grew up with couch co-op, I guarantee you, we are no longer the majority of the people buying those games. And so our needs are secondary. And are they're, they're going to make the same yeah. profits with or without us. We're, eight, we're getting old, folks. I will look. Yes, we're getting old. Okay, there's no, there's no denying that. But like, I just, I want, I want us to all put our heads together here, all four of us. And find a way to make couch co-op, split screen co-op sexy again. Like well, everyone I mean, is just so into it. online. I, I, right. But like, how do we in a more, I guess Border, Borderlands is pretty mainstream because I wanted to say let's, let's do that in a more mainstream way that like can get to games like Halo and Call of Duty and stuff. Because it just seems like it's now this bygone art. And I, I, I got don't. It. Do you want to know how? Every single. No, very quick. I, 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 I how you make trust it sexy. the solution because it took. Two seconds. No, no, no. But this is ahead. genius because no one's doing it at all. Think of one streamer that is two people, two concurrent people. Well, Na I mean, name, they, name one. There are some, but but name it. Name them. Well, I, that's not fair because I don't really watch streamers anyway. I can yeah, barely, like I, I couldn't name like I know like just saying ninja ninja. <laughs> no. I can name ninja, and that's pretty much it. So y you're you're asking the wrong people. I see where you're going with this, I listeners. Do think, if you like, know. Uh, if you could name five team streamers that are a big deal, I will send online warrior sweat. Okay, hold on, hold on. That is a bold. Yeah, line. you're definitely going about to send some you're sweat. You're going to, to be doing that. <laughs> I don't but think also, you will. Like, didn't Troy Baker and Nolan North wasn't their whole thing like they played like together on a couch? Maybe not necessarily couch co-op, but like they played games together on a couch. So like, I feel like if you're gonna be sending out swag, you need to have like stipulations. Is it do you? Do they need to be playing split screen? So that means you're really looking in the, the retro game niche. I'm talking right. playing it, couch co-op games is what I'm referring to. Okay, so split screen or something. Steven, it sounds like you're saying Tactic might be right. Yeah, I don't think or, there's going to be a lot of team popular streamers. I think there'll probably be a couple couple like couples that's a good point streamers, i mean but i don't think they're gonna be big they're not gonna be that right but Mr. that's Beast how you make it whatever. sexy again is yeah. you start to get these big streamers do it as in a couple form it's it well, it's tricky because like the, the twitch vehicle is such that the fact that they're sitting on the couch next to each other isn't going to add anything to your viewer experience because if they were playing co-op in two different rooms you would still be able to see both of them and hear both of them so you're not gaining anything from a streaming perspective as a result of them, you know, being on the couch together, there may be some format you can create, you know, that 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 would make that uh, more valuable as a premise. But I, I'm not sure what that would be. You know, what would really bring it back, like land cafes. This is this, I feel like land I'm one of those like have old been trying people. for a very long time to really take off, and they're just kind of like average successful. They're just they're just no one cares. Everyone's got their own setup at home, and they do that. Yeah. Well, so look, yeah, and Stephen, meanwhile, sitting here being like, how old are these guys? That's these like these land cafes. What are we talking about? I actually don't, I, I, I don't think I've been to a land cafe. Is that actually I've a thing? I've never been There's to cafes. one either. I know yeah, they're we, big we, we've been Japan. To, to a couple. Yeah, there used to be one by us, and we actually used to hold extra life events back in the Dizay, but then they closed because nobody was going to land cafes. So, yeah. Well, so... It, it it sounds like we're at that point in the show as we often are at online warriors one our main show account at ow lady six at ow nerd bomber at ow tactic how do we make couch co-op split screen sexy again how do, how do we bring that back because I, I think there's a lot of people like us who want it to come back but it's just i don't know if it's because there's also just like there's more money in the online 
features of like people microtransact and like buy things to ha- be having their own. Like there, there's got to be some way to make couch co-op economically viable for, for developers and also fun for us and, you know, make it marketable on, on places like Twitch and stuff. But I don't, my brain is not big enough to figure out what that is. Someone on Twitter probably has a big enough brain. So hit us up at one of those handles. Let us know what your thoughts are. And also let us know how you feel about Halo Infinite ripping it away from us. Uh, because I mean, again, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here acting like I'm outraged. I was never going to buy Halo Infinite. So like, I'm not personally that upset, but it's also like I'm outraged. from a trend perspective, it's, it's upsetting. Definitely. For what it's worth, I believe November 8th is when Forge Mode rolls out. So if you are a Halo fan and you are on the lookout for this, I just, I just told you that's when you, that's when you can expect it. So let us know. We're going to move now into our regularly scheduled break. Look, we did take a month off, but some things never change. We're back. at we're, We got the same format here. So we're going to take a break. But before we do, I get to do one of my in-person shout outs of our fantastic Patreon producer, Mr. Stephen Keller, who is here with us today as a result of his continued support at the night level on the show. Uh, that is one of our three tiers of support. And as a result of supporting us at that highest night level, Stephen gets this occasional guest spot on the show, as well as this shout out on every show and input into the weekly game segment. He's got the inside track today, folks. He picked the topic. So he's probably going to thump me on the head, which, you know, before we took a break, I, it was happening to me anyways. I think I'm currently in the last in the quiz rankings. He also, of course, gets access to the monthly secret segment and vlog. There's also two lower lower tiers of support on Patreon. There's a Squire level, which gets you access to the monthly secret segment and vlog, and the page gets you access to the monthly secret segment. So details on any and all of those levels of support can be found over at patreon.com slash online warriors podcast. Thanks again to Steven. Thank you, Steven. I can just I can just say hey, it to you welcome. right now. Th- thank you. I'm just taking my bow. And uh, yeah, patreon.com slash online warriors podcast. We'll take a short break now and we will come back to discuss Assassin's Creed. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because we heard them advertise on other shows. And quite frankly, I wanted to see what all the hype was about. And let me tell you, the hype was real. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all the things. It's quick and easy for me to toss back in the morning as I'm getting ready for work. One scoop into a glass of water helps me wake up even on tired mornings, and I know my gut and immune system will be prepped for the day. And I know what you're thinking. Green drink. Blech. But Athletic Green's green drink actually tastes really good. The best part is that I get all my supplements in for way cheaper than taking individual supplements themselves. It costs less than three bucks a day, so you're investing in your health for cheaper than a cup of coffee. It's also a trusted product. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews and comes recommended by professional athletes and leading health experts alike. And for every purchase, you're helping to feed kids. Athletic Greens donates to organizations helping to get nutritious food to kids in need, including No Kid Hungry here in the U.S. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com emerging. Again, that is Athletic greens.com slash emerging to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance late at night on september 27th 1977 three terrible things happened in the small town of Garrison. an infant was stolen from its crib never to be seen again a forest fire sparked just a mile down the road and the first in a series of grisly murders rocked the town all had one thing in common they were perpetrated by what those in the town called the Shadow Man. I'm going to bring you along on my investigation into just who the Shadow Man is. Welcome to Strange Trails. I'm your host, Finn Mitchell. Okay, Ubisoft has a security problem. That's a weird way to introduce this topic. But Assassin's Creed Mirage has been 
leaked. You know, it, essentially it was it was originally leaked and they've since now essentially come out and said, uh, yeah, this leak was, was true. Which like, first of all, good for them. I hate companies that like there's a leak that comes out and they're like, no. And then like three weeks later, they're like, OK, yeah. See, but I have a theory. I feel like some of these leaks that we see sometimes Ubisoft Forward is they're next week leaks. or this week, I guess. Yeah, I feel like they're planted. They're like, oh, no, it leaked. Wink, don't, wink. don't get hyped. <laughs> they're drumming up business. I, I, I suppose I could buy that. I want to talk about Assassin's Creed Mirage because uh, never mind, I believe you played Valhalla, right? I did. Yes. Or you were. It was really good. I sunk a lot of time into it. Like, it was long. It was really long. But I had a lot of fun with it. Now, there is a side character in Valhalla, Basim. Mm -hmm. He is the main character in Assassin's Creed Mirage. I think think Assassin's Creed, and I think we talked about this on the show before, the general premise of Assassin's Creed is just so unbelievably smart to me. Like, I I, I just think as a premise, and which, like, I'm not even sure if this was their original idea when they came out with the first Assassin's Creed. It was kind of very generically, like, I don't even know what you would consider the setting to be, but, and it went like that for a few of them. But the, what they're doing now, which is essentially like Assassin's Creed French Revolution Edition, Assassin's Creed American Revolution Edition, Assassin's Creed Vikings, Assassin's Creed, you know, London, uh, Assassin's Creed Pirates. There's just so many, like, I can't imagine what those boardroom meetings are like. They're just like, okay, what are we going to do for the next Assassin's Creed, guys? And someone just, like, names some historical archetype, and they wrap an entire game around that. This is like Assassin's Creed Aladdin edition. It's like Everyone learns history. This one's in, I think, Baghdad. But, like, yeah. they also managed to tie them all together. So, like, you can... I think the way they do these... and. I know there's a lot of divisiveness between whether people like the old school, like straightforward kind of linear style or more linear style. And now that's like sprawling RPG format. But regardless of that, the fact that you can pick up any game, because like I haven't played any of the other Assassin's Creed besides Valhalla. So I played that and there is a modern day story beats essentially what the entire overarching plot of Assassin's Creed is and like the modern day they can basically go back into I don't even really understand it fully because I don't really Whoa, spoilers. The modern plot I'm, well no this is I'm like set up and like they yeah, can basically okay. the modern people are going back in time through DNA or magic or something I'm not really sure yeah. to all of the these animus. different eras and so like once you get though back in the day It's like a a self-standing story, at least now it is. And so, like, I could pick up Assassin's Creed Valhalla and be a Viking, and that was dope, and I didn't really need to know anything else about Assassin's Creed. And, like, during the modern story beats, I was just like, I have no idea what's going on. I'm just going to solve this puzzle and go back to being a Viking. I'm waiting for someone to get out of the machine, and and then they go, okay, now you're ready. Here's your assassin mission. And then it's like an event that happened, like, within our lifetime. That would be the bee's knees. And that's how they just end it, finally. It's very interesting. Again, I just, I think the premise has so much juice. I will say, Nerd Bomber, to speak to your earlier point, and, and Steven, I'm going to swing it over to you in a second to ask my classic, what's your Assassin's Creed experience question? So prepare your answer. But my experience has been, I played the first one, which is like painfully linear, probably to most people who, who play the franchise now. I loved it. And I bought Assassin's Creed 2 for, I'm sure, the Xbox 360. And I started playing it and was like, immediately overwhelmed because it was like they they just added a lot more onto it and i just wanted to go around you know killing folks uh and like looking cool doing it because that's also like i feel like one of the main pillars of assassin's creed is like not only are you killing people but you're looking so cool doing it that you're just gonna feel like the coolest person in the world and the second one was like all right you're gonna do that but also in the meantime you're gonna like do a billion side quests and i just looked at it from a completion standpoint which was the wrong thing to do and and i never got through it now it, again if i went back I, I i might have a totally different experience with it but like this is one of those franchises where i watched the trailers for the games and i, I remember in particular during like the Ezio auditore like that phase of the franchise i was like these just look like the coolest games in the world and it looks so like and you know the trailers are all cinematic but they just it was so cool well, you should be excited if you liked the very linear aspect of it, because one of the parts right. of this leak was that this game is actually going to be like, instead of the sprawling RPG, more of almost like a side game that goes back to that more linear, just story focused driven. on stealth and story like driven too. gameplay. Right. So, Stephen, can we throw Assassin's Creed in the 
Pokemon Halo, I don't remember what else you said before, Bucket, or is this one that you've actually, you know, gotten your feet wet with, you know, beyond a single player too? This is a franchise that I really liked at one point. I played the first one up through Black Flag. I bought... Uni- oh, okay, so you got... Yeah, I bought really Unity and Syndicate, never played them, still own them. I played Origins, I bought Odyssey, but haven't played it, and then I... So Valhalla is the only one I haven't bought yet. And I like it, like looking at it, I like it because it's just, I like looking at a map and going through and checking off the things. I like filling the map, but they do get a little long. They do get a little tedious and they're Ubisoft games. So I know they're going to be cheap. So then I just wait for them to go on sale. And then by the time they go on sale, my backlog's too big. So I never get to them. Been there. This is a fantastic candidate. And I know this exists in various forms, but like if they did a Assassin's Creed, they might be doing this. Like, correct me if, or tell me if they are, but like if they came out for like some PS with some like PS5 remaster of like, here's the first five games, like, like they did like when, when the PS4 came out and they did the Uncharted. Actually, they just did that again for the PS5, the Uncharted, like all the games. Here they are. If they did that for Assassin's Creed, I would pay a, a tight 70 bucks for it just because I. I want very badly to be in this franchise and there's so much to be played. And I, I do think now if I went back to like those big maps with all the icons on it, like I could probably handle it. This was like relatively early. Like I hadn't done a whole lot of RPGing yet. And, and so I might've just not been ready for it. But. See, but when it started to move to more RPG and more open map, it's sort of the missions and that sort of forced you to do everything so that you can be at a comparable level to handle the story. So, it's still, sure. in my opinion, in the later installments, is a bit overwhelming. Yeah, I will say one of the things with Valhalla and why I did spend so much time in it, because normally with open world games, I hit a certain point. Like I start out saying, oh, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to check every side quest off the list. And then I probably get like 75% of the way through and I'm like, okay, no, I'm just going to mainline the story now. And I Right, because you're... Yeah, I just get done. But like with Valhalla, right. I believe I was kind of gate kept like tactic said like there is a level and like certain things i needed to do to move forward with the story and so i think i ended up doing a lot more than i initially intended but like i had fun with it but i think if i would have had my druthers i don't know if i would have spent like 120 hours in the game probably more like 80 but i think the one thing that this game needs to have is you should be able to be at a comparable level with just doing the story quest alone to be able to complete the story i never finished odyssey because i was just exhausted with all of the side stuff to level up well i think this that's why they said like this is going to be a tighter or at least in the leak a tighter more condensed kind of going back to the linear roots instead of like that rpg progression which I think might satisfy well, right. a lot of people's kind of craving for that early series gameplay. It's a delicate balance, right? Because, and this is true of probably any RPG, but but like like you said, Tactic, you want to be able to just, if you just play through the story, you get to a comparable level, but then you might not be incentivizing players enough to, to do all these side quests that the developers have put so many hours into. There's certainly people who are going to come into it and say, I want to do every side quest because I'm a, you know, psycho completionist like 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 myself but there's probably other people who they're not sure how they want to play it and and they want to find a way to incentivize people to play those those side quests i mean the operative question here you know and steven i'll ask you because it sounds like you have a lot of experience with various areas of the franchise i mean are you on board with a smaller scale sort of uh, linear experience like it sounds like this one's going to be are you on board with the shift back towards that or do you do you think they need to just continue doing the rpg heavy stuff that they've been doing my backlog would prefer that they keep them short and sweet i've been playing a game right now where i'm like 25 hours in halfway through it and i'm like i don't want to keep playing this i get stale pretty quickly with games so they can make it short and sweet i'd be in but knowing yeah valhalla is so big and odyssey are so big that i just don't want to jump into them just because I know there's new games coming out that I would rather play than jump into those. So this is kind of right. like more holistically. Do you find yourself avoiding like those super big open world games? Because I feel like I've been doing that lately. Just because yeah. I want to play like more condensed short experiences so I can like experience more. Yeah, like I've had Forbidden West on my backlog for since launch. And I just know it's going to be a long, big map, check everything off type game. And so just been putting it off i'm like god of war is coming out soon that's gonna be short and sweet probably so Mm -hmm. i'll just play it after that and like 
it's tough with all the like the game pass and stuff like that because all of the shorter indie games hit that and i'm like i think to myself i'm like i can play five nice little indie games or I can just spend my entire season playing this one like 200 hour game. Right. And I'd rather just play well, five. And, and that's, and that's what I, you know, to, to dip a little bit into my, my, what are you up to you? But also just as, as a general note with like how I'm gaming these days, like it, not to paint with a broad brush, but like, that's one of the things that I just continue to feel like it makes, it makes the switch eShop and like the switch playing the switch in general. This is so great to me right now is everything about the switch is so much lighter weight to me. Like there's no game. I, I guess some of the AAA titles probably are, but like any of the stuff that I'm buying on the switch eShop, it's just, there's so much more self-contained. A lot of them are indies, but even the ones that aren't, they're just very self-contained experiences that are, they feel so much more manageable than the stuff that I have going on the PS five, which is, you know, I've scraped death loop a little bit, but like I immediately started it. And just the time I did, which granted was like right around my wedding, which was really stupid of me to do, but like I was immediately overwhelmed by the scale and it seemed great oh, Deathloop but like, is short once I'm you sure get into it, it it's short but you did start at a bad time to take a break i mean this is a tangent but like to remember what you need to remember that <laughs> feels like a terrible time to take a break it's 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 heavier weight and like it, and you know to make no mention of like mass effect and like a lot of franchises like you mentioned god of war being lighter weight but like franchise games on on the ps5 now or like the xbox one x like it, you're paying 70 dollars for them ostensibly so they're going to be in a lot of cases like very heavy experiences so it's it's definitely interesting to think about like you said like always keeping your backlog in mind and like if you're a completionist gamer like like i think nerd bomber is and like i know i am like going around like you said just kind of checking boxes and like that was like you mentioned forbidden west i started horizon zero dawn and like re- really liked it but i lost steam because it was just it's so expansive and that's probably to my detriment almost certainly to my detriment based on everything i've heard about how great that game is but i don't know if i have the stamina as a gamer these days <laughs> like and I, i've definitely mentioned that on the show before but it's just it's true now more than ever so when they say hey here's an assassin's creed game that is going to be more like the first one and like more self-contained and like you can play through it in i don't know eight to twelve hours is that too short of a time for a campaign like i, I to me that's a sweet spot and that's a lot of the games that i've responded the most positively to have been games that have around that length so we want to know from you guys on the Twitter sphere, new Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Mirage. Do you like the direction they're taking? How do you feel about, you know, the Assassin's Creed duality of shorter self-contained experiences versus the more RPG heavy experiences that we've gotten more lately? Let us know and be on the lookout for more details about Assassin's Creed Mirage. It sounds like they're going to reveal more about not just that game, but the future of Assassin's Creed on September 10th when Ubisoft is hosting a multi-game showcase. So for all we know, we'll be talking about that next week. <laughs> I, I, I guess we'll see what they say. That takes us into what are you up to? And this, this is, we're in a unique situation here in that we've been gone for a while. So I, I'm going to, as I collect my thoughts, I'm going to step aside and, and, and give Steven the floor as, as he's been away for even longer than we have. Steven, what have you been up to lately in the in the gaming movies whatever world you want to you want to walk us through? Yeah, so this year, this fall coming up is the World Cup in Qatar. And growing up, I played a lot of soccer, pretty much it was the only sport I ever played. And so I've always kind of liked it, but recently I've kind of gone jumped in full blow or doing everything so i've been playing a lot of fifa 22 and mario strikers battle league how do you like mario strikers it's a weird game it's a game that a lot like my soccer kind of playing career is i'm horrible at it but i can't stop playing it it's there's not a lot of depth to it it's pretty much just online play or you do the league mode and the league mode is i don't really like it because it's based off you can add one character to the team, and then so people in your league are adding the other characters. So it's all based on characters that other people are leveling up or putting the gear on. So if it's like if a person adds a player that has bad gear, you are going to be stuck playing with this character that has bad gear. And so luckily I'm in a league where people are pretty active and slightly good. So we worked all our way up to the top league, but like it's just trying to find a team that you like is kind of annoying. And so... Mm-hmm. There's just not much to it. It's just you get coins by the... How do you find your team? Just out of curiosity. 
I just put a call out on Discord or in Twitter and just joined a Discord group that it's another podcast, it's a Nintendo Dad's podcast, and they just had a, a group that had its spot open, so I joined it. And shout out to Nintendo Dads. Yeah, I think it was the Dads After Dark is like the group, and I mean I'm not a dad, but they let me in. So some of the guys you're are a dog good. dad that counts. Yeah, I guess that does count. But yeah, so they're gonna add more characters, but they're not really doing much. In between, I mean, it's kind of like what they did with golf and tennis. It's just it comes out half-baked and it's just kind of there. There's not much to it. I want to speak to FIFA for a second, which was the other game you mentioned. And I, I haven't played FIFA in a long, long time. But like I had when I had a 360 in college, I had FIFA 07 and I almost wore that disc out. Yeah. Like the FIFA games, man, they are just and all, like also the, the overarching concept here, which is like the World Cup, is so watchable and like and and you know FIFA is just it's so playable. It's just the barrier to entry is relatively low, and it's just it's so much fun. So I I don't know how if at all that franchise has evolved since then, since like 15 years ago. But I I certainly know just from a general gamer perspective that it's more highly regarded than you know franchises like Madden, which is just like seems like a constant dumpster fire, and that's another conversation. But I'm uh. I'm jealous is basically what I'm saying. I haven't played FIFA in a long time, but not to cut in and kind of tangentially, but since you said you like were going all in on soccer, have you watched Welcome to Wrexham at all? I've watched all four episodes so far. And that was another one of the things I was going to bring up was that show. And I'm really liking it. It's kind of fun just to see them buy this bottom feeder of a team and just kind of watch them have to be owners and fire coaches, hire CEOs, get pick up players, cut players, and just kind of watch the kind of the intricacies of that has kind of been kind of interesting. For the listeners, this and for my own clarification, this is the team that Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney own, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, which interesting in, in its own right. But yeah, I, I can't imagine the, mac, the machinations of, of, like you said, doing all that stuff. And Was that a pun? Also being... <laughs> Uh, no, but yeah, like to, to also being Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney in that situation has to be interesting. Yeah. I don't. I also wonder about the 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 ventilations too. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> that was not your best word. <laughs> it wasn't an intended pun, but I, I guess I guess now I have to say that it was. Sorry, Stephen. We're we're trampling all over you. Oh, you're Can, good. Please please continue. The floor is yours. Yeah. The other things I guess I've done is I uh, watched The Damned United and Bend It Like Beckham. The two soccer movies I've never seen before, so those were pretty good. So yeah, I've just been and when I said I replaced you guys with six podcasts, they're all soccer podcasts. It's like I'm doing fantasy Premier League. Yeah, I'm just all into the soccer right now. So all in on soccer. Do you happen to know when the World Cup starts? Sometime because in I'm... November, because the England US game is Black Friday, and I think that's the last game of the group stage for us. Gotcha. Middle November time frame right on yeah i've heard ben like beckham is really good i've never seen it myself but it is good shout out to soccer i'm gonna go next i'm gonna bounce around a lot because you know a a couple things happened got married i did i I did go through with it or i guess more accurately my wife went through with it she she decided yeah okay i'll deal with this so uh, that that happened i also finally watched everything everywhere all at once which is a movie i actually mentioned a little earlier in the episode which is one of the it's like was one of those movies that came out i think earlier this year or last year and like to widespread acclaim and I just never got around to watching it. And, uh, you know, that movie, amongst other movies I watched, I did I did watch Free Guy finally, which was another one kind of in that exact category. I heard it was great, just never got around to watching it. And then The King's Man was terrible. I have to warn anyone who's a fan of the Kingsman franchise to not watch The King's Man. It was terrible. I don't even want to say more about it. I don't want to give more airtime than that. It just sucked. And it was disappointing. So yeah, I've been watching a lot of movies. I did mention starting Deathloop. I'm not very far into it, but I, I did start that. And finally, I also just want to actually shout out another podcast that I just started listening to called Smartless, which is a podcast with Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and Sean Hayes, where they have on guests. I've been very into, in general, like for lack of a better way to describe it, behind the scenes podcasts, essentially where like actors are interviewed and like they talk about like how they started, you know, doing what they do and, and what the road to the point that they're at was like. I find it very fascinating. So I don't know what exactly spurred that sort of like I got very into listening to like actor interviews or whatever, but I've been doing a lot of that lately as well. Yeah, that's 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 about it on my end at, at the risk of, you know, like getting way down involved in like literally a month worth of life. I will leave it at that and swing it over to Nerd Bomber. Nerd Bomber, what do you got for us? So aside from, you know, also getting married, I watched a lot of TV and 
Two big shows that I kind of want to bring up is the first one is The Offer. This is the one that's on Paramount Plus, and it's all about basically Al Ruddy, who was the producer of The Godfather and all of the behind the scenes stuff that happened to kind of make The Godfather happen. And I thought this was really interesting. I'm sure it was kind of skewed because Al Ruddy helped to create this show. And so he often comes across as like the good guy and the the guy who basically was the driving force behind the whole movie. But it does really, it's a super interesting look. I always like like behind the scenes Hollywood, especially like back in the day. I find that stuff so right. interesting because it's kind of like if you look back at The Godfather, which ironically I've never seen, but it's such a tentpole of, you know, American cinema. It's highly regarded as one of probably the best movies in history, which again, I've never seen. But like that kind of was the start of the golden era of Hollywood and American movie making. And so I always find, you know, just the historical behind the scenes look at like Hollywood back then really interesting but I also like because the mafia was involved and was kind of working behind the scenes to make this movie happen because originally you know the mafia was very against the movie being made because it didn't want to portray Italians in a bad light and then basically Al Ruddy and the the producing team had to kind of work with them to you know get their buy-in and kind of get them to sign off on making this movie. And I just thought it was super interesting. It was kind of like a weird crossover between like Hollywood and Sopranos. And it was just a pretty good show. So I want to cut in for one second just to mention the movie is pretty good, first of all. But you know what's better? What? I don't know how much they talked about it on the show, but the book. Oh, the yeah. material is, in my opinion, superior. So if you're, if you're looking for a read, it's it's phenomenal. And yeah, it's, I'm, I'm sure the show is really good too. But that's that's my two cents yeah i think after watching the show like i have never been interested in watching the godfather ever i don't care how many times people have told me i need to watch it whatever i'm just like Meh. and this i was probably... the only italian thing she was interested in but um you can get away without without reading re or watching the movie but if you do watch the movie like read i would recommend reading the book first okay just one man's opinion. But yeah, this kind of got me interested. So I probably will do that at some point. Another show, though, that I did watch was Euphoria. And this is another show that I've heard a lot of like really amazing things about. This is the... My wife goes crazy for Euphoria. The, yeah, this and is the show on yeah. HBO with Zendaya as the lead. And my initial reaction, because I first started watching this when... Tectic had COVID and I was basically living in our basement. And so I was like, what could I watch that he might not be interested in? And he usually hates like high school Which stuff. She doesn't remember. I actually recommended this as a show to watch. Yeah, I don't remember that. But I was just like, oh, he hates stuff about high school. So I went. But, it's like, but isn't it? I mean, it's like high schoolers in like very adult situations. Yes, it is. It's high school porn, basically. Yeah. I yeah, it. yeah. It's like. It's I I don't know much about it, but I've like it's been one of those things where like I've walked through the. Let room me be clear. That's not why it, I recommended like, it. I recommended it because it was so critically acclaimed. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> it, it's very highly regarded. I just I, I I when I've walked through the room and I've been like, what on earth is happening? But anyways, go. these high schoolers like they really go through it. <laughs> the first couple of episodes, I was like, I don't know if I'm into this because like this is not my high school experience this is not what i went through but then like you just get sucked in because like you said they are very adult situations so then you know the fact that they're in high school all of the characters kind of falls by the wayside and you just kind of get sucked into the drama of everything and i will say like zendaya is incredible i think when you compare her disney channel work against spider-man against a oh, man she was in dune and then greatest showman and that is the greatest really showman artistic performance and then euphoria like her range of acting ability is incredible and basically her main character rue is the the central narrator of this show and you kind of see everything like through her lens she narrates everything but then it's also obviously focused on her for a lot of it because kind of like an ensemble show but she's one of the main focuses and her ability to portray drug use and addiction and the struggles of all that, like her acting was phenomenal. So, I mean, it's it's one of those shows where there's a lot of trigger warnings and stuff like that, where if there's a lot of stuff that makes you uncomfortable, like sex, physical violence, drug use, all that kind of stuff, like probably don't want to watch this show, but it is very artistically well done and just sucks you in. 
it's kind of crazy. It's very dark, but it sucks you in. Yeah, I heard nothing but good things about it, but I've never never really watched it myself. Yeah, outside of that, that's cool. That's cool. also just read a lot of books. I think I cranked out like 10 books in the past like month, so read a lot of books. I can't even like begin to pare down what I've read, but I've read a lot of books. Thank you to my local library. Also, shout out to you, like very sidelong mentioning that Tectic had COVID at one point. I want to make it clear that it was it was me that gave it to him. And in particular, it was, it was my wedding. I just want to, I want to come, cl- come clean. Well, because so, of you, I watched Euphoria, so. Yeah. Hey, you're, you're welcome, Tectic. Why don't you, uh, why don't you take us through, just, you know, give us an update. So I want, I'm going to keep mine short and sweet and talk about one thing that's been rattling my brain, and that is a home renovation project. We have a, a laundry room situation, and it was sort of this, this haphazard mess of clothing that was sort of hanging on rope, and, and I really wanted to sort of condense the clothing and put up shelves with a bar across to organize it all in one spot and clean it up. So we had these shelves that were held up by these vertical boards, and these vertical boards basically sealed the walls instead of like sheetrock or anything like that. So when I was taking down... So you're taking down drywall at this point. Well, I was taking down the boards, which which basically covered the space between the studs. So, sure. Because it's an unfinished okay. laundry room. When I took down the shelf and then I took down the vertical boards, all of a sudden something fell out at me. I look down on the ground. What what just fell out of me? It's a gun, a very real looking gun. But with further inspection, it turned out to be a very real looking gun that was actually a, a C, one of those CO two powered BB guns. But it didn't have it like it didn't have the orange tip. It was this was made in the late nineties before all the don't make it look like a real gun stuff came out. So you you carbon dated this thing. You did some research. Yes. And I even okay. I even sort of handled it to make sure that it wasn't a real gun because it was like it was it was locked and loaded after it fell out fell out of the wall. So then I was like, oh, now, first okay. of all, if I'm in that situation and a and a gun falls out of the wall, the first thing bef- that I have to do before inspecting the gun is go change my pants because I poop my pants. So good on you for not doing that. Thank you. So I mean, then I would lose my mind after I sort of calmed down. I looked at the wall where it fell from, and there were knives stabbed into the wood in the wall a lot of knives one of which had a brownish substance smeared across it at this point i am convinced this is like all stuff that was used for a murder and then sealed in the wall so you know what i did then i called the police and i said guys you got to take this but just know i handled the crap out of that gun (laughs) Well, so I think, yeah, this is a wild story, but my perspective on the story was I'm, you know, minding my life watching television and I get a message from, I think it was actually Nerd Bomber at first, but it was basically like, so something just happened here and they sent me the pictures and I was... It's, you can concur. It's a y- real y- looking y- gun. This The story is one thing, but seeing the pictures kind of adds a level to it of just like... The, the knives were like stuck in the wall in like a very specific looking way. It was it's all like very It's like they bizarre. were stabbed. So there's a, it was, there was the vertical beams for the wall. And then there was a horizontal two by four that they screwed in there. And then they were stabbed into that two by four. But like at angles that looked like a like weird... Like fanned like, out. Yeah. And then sealed was, in the wall. Yeah. Who did you buy this house from? Well, right. Who did you buy the so, house yes, from? Well, the mystery continues. So we know of two of the previous owners of the house, but after talking to the, some of the neighbors, and I, I still have to go back and look at the title, after talking to the, some of the neighbors, they had told me, well, no, there was this third guy, you know, the guy killed himself. That's the murder guy. That's, so which yeah, so- my brain is now going, oh my goodness, there's the guilt, there's the, 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 the murder weapons this is a thing so now this is like racking my brain and i just haven't had the motivation to research it yet or the time and man this is going to be an adventure for the next probably i don't know three days keep keep us updated i'll, I'll check back in next option week. b some kid collected like tactical knives and a bb gun and hit him from his parents because he didn't want to get in trouble that's option b yeah keep us updated because and i like also i I'm just curious, like, I applaud the decision to call the authorities. And, and in fact, I believe when you sent the photos, I was like, did you call the authorities? We didn't. I initially, cannot imagine. But then, like, three people were like, you should probably call yeah. the cops. They're like, we and, should and, 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 I, and I was one of them. 
but but i i was curious like i was curious what their reaction would be of like hey we found that like they very nonchalantly yeah, it was just, all right we'll have some we'll have someone to come pick them up yeah it was very nonchalant he put them in a paper bag and was like oh yeah we'll probably dispose of these <laughs> which is like okay that's man that's that's nuts yeah i don't know i, I don't even know what to say but i uh, good good on them i guess I that's want, one of the many wild yeah. stories of august <laughs> Yeah, I was joking with some people that we should change the podcast and call it Only Murders in the Basement and become a true crime podcast. <laughs> right. When we're not podcasting, this is the kind of trouble that we get ourselves into. Like we're like finding potential murder weapons in places. So but I tell, it's good I, that we're back. I told Tactic like we're not allowed to open any more walls. We're just going to just be naive to the rest of the mysteries. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to know. <laughs> if there's bones in my walls, right. I don't need to know. No, they'd be in the backyard. That's uh, that seems like it's for the best. But in any in any case, keep us keep us updated. Great. Well, Tactic, I think you have a quiz to host. But uh, before you get into the the nitty gritty of it, I, I know we're following a bit of a different format today. I want to go through this, the 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 records of all the people, even though it's going to hurt me to do so because I'm I'm pretty behind at this point. I think Tactic, you are ten and eight. You are in you are in front right now. You're in the pole position. Nerd Bomber nine and eight. I am eight and twelve. And of course, Stephen one and one. So, Stephen, this is a big this is a big game for you. Yeah, I'm gonna, you, you're either going to have a winning record or a losing yeah, record. I'm be down there so. with you soon. All right, there's no need to rub it in, but we'll 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 see <laughs> we'll see what happens. Tactic, what do you have for us today? All right, so this game format is going to be completely different than what we usually do, and the reason why is because the quiz topic is She Hulk again. That's right, I said again. My bad. So. Because we're, it's a duplicate topic, we're going to do a completely different format, and we're going to do Jeopardy style. So if you know the answer, give me a loud buzz. That's my, my showmanship. Gonna, so give, a, give a loud wild. buzz, yelp, whatever noise you can, can make, as long as you do it first. Question, do I get penalized for wrong answers? So when someone gets a wrong answer... The answer, answer should be yes. The answer should when be someone, yes. If you get a wrong works. answer, what's going to happen then is you're going to sit quietly while I give the opportunity for the other contestants you can steal? to buzz in their own answer and steal the point. Right. But if I, because if I was a player, you get negative. I'm just going to try to buzz in first every time. Stall. I should get negative is what no, I'm saying. That's I'm not saying what I'm going to be doing. You, need... you can buzz in and okay. guess. And if you get it wrong, you've lost. But there's like, a, like you can't stall. You have to guess an answer right away or else eh, time's up next person. So you better have an answer on the ready because then the other players can now think about it (laughs) nope i'm gonna make you i'm gonna make you regret that policy but but i think you're gonna regret it but by all means so and the reason why you're going to regret it is because to again make it unique because we've already covered the general trivia of she hulk i narrowed the scope and made it all questions based solely on the she hulk mcu series so glad I have specifically, specifically. Oh, so yeah. basically, I've watched, I, I get to win. I've watched well, none of it. No, because specifically surrounding Easter eggs within the show, which I will bet you you didn't catch any of. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Tactic seeing these Easter eggs on the show and like looking over to see if Nerd Bomber notices and she doesn't. And he just like writes it down for this quiz. Okay. Well, some some of them she Look, will okay. get. Some of them she won't get. This feels biased, but okay. That really well, it really instills faster, confidence. What Pixar movie was referenced in She-Hulk? Already. Uh, Buzz. Uh, Toy Story, obviously. Buzz. He got it wrong. I know that. Yes, that's incorrect. Okay. Buzz. Inside Out. That is correct. Inside Out was referenced when they talked about the character Bing Bong sacrificing himself. Yeah. Well, for, also, this first of all, This is biased. This is biased. Second of all, this is, this is collusion. This is absolutely yeah, collusion. It, it but, doesn't but seem like an Easter let's egg Let's continue. There. What X-Men mutant was referenced buzz wolverine correct Whew. he went with, he went with the uh the he went the hugh jackman route and i respect it in the headline while jen is searching for a job we see man fights with metal claws in bar brawl which is clearly wolverine see nerd bomber didn't know that one <laughs> <laughs> while jen is trying to defend her client her new client abomination we see a clip that can hurt her case from what other marvel movie Buzz. Buzz. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's give it give it give it to the it's Steven. Give, we'll give we'll give it to Steven. That was that was a pretty much a simultaneous buzz. Steven, take it away. The incredible Hulk. Incorrect. Oh. Oh. Buzz. I See that's good. That's, that's, yeah. that's, oh I oh I already buzzed. Yeah, I, I, I already I'm got a buzz it in. To... Buzz after his buzz. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say um, the Avengers. Nope. 
Incorrect. Shang Chi. Can I buzz Correct. again? Correct. Oh. And if you've seen Shang Chi, then you didn't need to see She Hulk. You would have known that because he was in Shang Chi. Yeah, I was gonna guess. See, I haven't seen Shang Chi, so I, I'm I'm just screwed every possible way. <laughs> okay, so so two to one to to, to nil. Uh, how many questions are there, by the way? How many? How much time do I have to? There's five to total. Round. It's. <laughs> oh, so I'm screwed already. Okay, yeah. good. Does the start of She Hulk? take place before or after spider-man no way home buzz uh before no buzz buzz (laughs) (laughs) it's gotta be after well this is yeah this this is crap this is crap (laughs) you're you're welcome for giving the two of you the answer i i i fell on the landmine there for you guys okay Uh, okay fine so this is like this is this is a good so i should sit this out there's no point in me okay hang on we're gonna do buzz we're gonna do buzz on this one but this can also this one will be no no hear me out do do (laughs) this last one will be price is right style Uh uh-oh because it's numerical well then how do you make it buzz buzz? what is that it doesn't even make it doesn't even make any sense yeah do a text in dude do Do a text in and i'll just i'll just sit out all right what year did captain america lose his virginity in the mcu first of all it's a that's a wild question and i'm sad that i can't be a part of it it's not a wild question it's completely pertinent i'm not saying it's not pertinent i'm just saying it's a a wild question so you both busted we got to do a new one interesting Steve, okay. Steve was able to lose his virginity to a woman he met on the USO tour in 1943. Okay, so that's very, that's like during them, that's like during that movie, yeah. the first movie. That's interesting. Steve, and for what it's worth, I thought that was a phenomenal guess. I did not see Nerd Bomber's guess. I, I do see yours. I said 1974, and Steven said 2015. I figured it would 1974 feels like, feels like it has no justification at all. I figured it, it didn't. Post thaw. So She Hulk is played by Tatiana. Maslani? Maslani. Yeah. How old is she? If Steven doesn't win, this is this is collusion, by the way. <laughs> just, F, just FYI. Steven wins. Yes. She is Okay. She is 36. He guessed 30, and Nerd Bomber guessed 28. Oh, she went for the young tactic. That's what I was trying to go for. I did. Yeah. Okay, well, Steven moves to which two and one. Which is really, which... really pathetic for Nerd Bomber, considering she was the only one that's other person that's seen the show. But that doesn't apply to the show. Yeah, I am bad right. with trying to figure out people's ages. Steven at two and one has... But it shouldn't have been a dead heat. <laughs> Far and away the highest Fair. highest win, win percentage on the year in, in, in the quiz. Uh, I moved to eight and 13, which is, which is, you know, it's kind of my style at this point. Uh, Nerd Bomber moves to nine and nine. So, uh, Tactics obviously staying at 10 and 8. So, we will continue this, uh, for those that don't know, in case this is your first episode. We'll be continuing to keep track of quiz wins and losses for the remainder of the year. At the end of the year, presumably something will happen (laughs) to the person who loses. I don't even know if we actually fully fleshed out what happened to Tactic last year after he lost. He had to eat the apple pie with cheese. It was weird. And he kind of enjoyed it, I believe. That's kind of weird. Uh, It just tasted like a whole lot of nothing. Well... Hopefully that's as bad as, as my punishment is because right now I am in line for, for punishment, but we'll see. So that concludes the 207th episode of the Online Warriors podcast. We thank you for joining us. We thank you for sticking with us through our hiatus in August. We are back now. We will be back on a weekly basis from here on out, I'd like to say, for, for at least for a while. Thank you to Stephen for being here. Stephen, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Anything else you want to shout out before we uh, close things down here? I'm just glad you guys are back. I've missed you. It's been a long month. Don't go away ever again. It's good. It's okay. Wow. We'll give it another five uh, it's, years. Yeah, never. Can't leave. <laughs> it's 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 very good to be back. And it's, it's good to be here with you. And uh, yeah, if, if you like what you listen to, you can head to Apple Podcasts, leave us a review, hit us up on Patreon, and the details I mentioned earlier in the show, or hit us up on Twitter at any of the handles I mentioned. And, and you know, get out there and, and tell your friends, tell your folks. Online Warriors Podcast, we're back in business, baby. With that, I will take things over to Tech Tick to close us out with a tech tip. Stop looking in walls. Yeah, just don't do that. That's a good tip. It's a good tip. We'll see you all next week.